Many of the worst environmental and social problems that we face can be traced to root causes in the economic system, in particular to issues of unsustainable scale, unfair distribution, or inefficient allocation. Ecological economics is particularly concerned with the first two of these, with scale and distribution, while neoclassical economics is much more interested in the last one, allocation. In this short lecture, I'll explain the differences between these three important concepts and the different types of policies that are needed to address them. Let's start with allocation. Allocation is the process of apportioning resources to the production of different goods and services. So what materials, energy, or human labor go into the production of cars versus shoes, iPhones, Game of Thrones, etc.? A good allocation is one that is efficient. And within economics, efficient means that resources are allocated to products according to people's preferences. An efficient allocation is one that best satisfies individual wants weighted by the individual's ability to pay, that is, by their income and wealth. Allocative efficiency is achieved when we put scarce resources to the use that generates the most monetary value, as this is taken to be a measure of utility. The optimal allocation of resources is what economists call a Pareto optimum, after the Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto, or simply Pareto efficiency. If we have Pareto efficiency, that means that if we were to reallocate the resources to a different mix of products, at least one person would be made worse off by that reallocation, even if others were made better off. An efficient allocation is achieved when the supply of goods and services matches the demand for these goods and services. This means that the economy is producing the things that people want, as expressed by their ability to pay for these things. However, if you have more money, then through your spending power, you also have more influence on what is produced. And this is why more money is currently spent trying to find a cure for male pattern baldness, which affects wealthy white men, than is spent on trying to find a cure for malaria, which affects poor children in Africa. So allocative efficiency is definitely not about fairness. How do we achieve efficient allocation? Well, free and competitive markets are the instrument of choice in neoclassical economics. However, it's worth saying that there are some goods and services that markets are not well suited to provide, like healthcare or ecosystem services. Ecological economics recognizes that the market is only one possible mechanism for allocation. So allocation is not about fairness, but distribution is. Distribution refers to how resources are apportioned among different individuals. In other words, who gets the stuff that is produced. Whereas allocation is concerned with production, distribution is concerned with consumption. And we generally think about distribution in terms of income and wealth, and we usually measure it by looking at how equally or unequally income and wealth are distributed. A good distribution is one that is fair. In other words, where the degree of inequality in income and wealth is limited to some acceptable range. And distribution is very much a, a normative issue as we have to decide as a society what constitutes an acceptable range. So the concept of justice is very important here. How do we achieve a fair distribution? Well, taxes and welfare payments are probably the most obvious way. For example, by using progressive taxation, where the rich pay a higher proportion of their income in tax than the poor, we can redistribute income from the rich to the poor. The state can also make distribution fairer by providing basic services that are free at the point of use, such as universal health care or universal education. And we can also make the economy more distributive by design, by establishing maximum pay differentials within companies, or through institutions like employee-owned cooperatives. Last up is scale. Scale is the physical size of the economy relative to the ecosystem that contains it. And we can talk about scale in two different ways. The first is in terms of stocks, i.e. the stock of built capital relative to the stock of natural capital. However, neither of these concepts are particularly easy to measure, which is why we usually talk about scale in terms of flows. 
In this sense, the scale of the economy is the flow of matter and energy going through the economy relative to the capacity of ecosystems to regenerate resources and assimilate wastes. Environmental footprint indicators such as the carbon footprint, material footprint, and ecological footprint are good ways of measuring the scale of economic activity at the national level, while planetary boundaries provide a powerful set of measures at the global level. A good scale is one that is at least sustainable, i.e. that is within ecosystem limits. However, the maximum sustainable scale may not be the optimal scale. The optimal scale may very well be less than the maximum sustainable one. For example, the costs of economic growth may begin to exceed its benefits well before the maximum sustainable scale is reached. How do we achieve sustainable scale? Well, one way would be to put a cap on resource use, to put limits on the use of key resources such as fossil fuels, forests, and fisheries based on the best scientific evidence that is available. And although the natural sciences are very important here, any decision on scale is ultimately a normative social decision. Crossing planetary boundaries does not mean instant collapse of ecosystems, but the more and the longer we transgress these boundaries, the greater the risk our society is taking. The relative priority of these three goals, efficient allocation, fair distribution, sustainable scale, differs between neoclassical and ecological economics. Neoclassical economics is concerned almost solely with efficient allocation, to some degree with fair distribution, and not at all with sustainable scale. Ecological economics has the exact opposite list of priorities. It's first concerned with sustainable scale, then fair distribution, and only after these two have been dealt with is it concerned with efficient allocation. In ecological economics, these are seen as three independent policy goals. And if we trade one goal off against another, that's an ethical choice, not an economic choice. This is not to say, though, that the goals are not related in some ways. For instance, the distribution of income and wealth influences the allocation of resources. If you're rich, you can afford to buy more stuff and what you spend your money on influences what gets produced. A more subtle point is that the pursuit of efficient allocation effectively leads to the pursuit of economic growth. Neoclassical economics aims for a Pareto efficient allocation, a situation in which we cannot make one person better off without making someone else worse off. But if we can't make the rich a little worse off to make the poor better off, then we have to grow the economy to make people better off. Herman Daly often uses the example of loading a ship to help clarify the difference between allocation and scale. If you're loading a ship, you have to ensure that the cargo is balanced so that the ship doesn't tip over. This is a problem of allocation. However, regardless of how nicely you arrange things on board, you also have to ensure that you don't put too many crates on the ship Otherwise, it'll sink, and this is a problem of scale. The more you put on a ship, the deeper it sits in the water. And for this reason, ships have a painted line on the hull, the plimsoll line, showing the limit to which the ship can be loaded. Planetary boundaries may provide us with a plimsoll line for the Earth. Regarding the relative importance of allocation versus scale, Herman Daly probably said it best when he said, economists who are obsessed with allocation to the exclusion of scale, deserve the environmentalist criticism that they are busy rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering what happened to distribution, that's who actually gets the stuff on the boat.